All right, let's do this. Hello, guys, and in this commentary, oh, it it's not really a dual commentary because um, he's not going to be talking, but I am okay. playing a Brothers to the End ranked gameplay with an angry beaver, who is one of my subscribers. His channel will be linked below, so be sure to check it out. He does uh, gameplays frequently with dialogue during the gameplay. Well, of course, in this case, because I didn't have my headset set up to where you can hear me, just listening to him talk occasionally, and shout out warnings is probably not going to be too interesting, so you're going to have to listen to me the whole time, which is what you normally do when I do commentaries, so hopefully it won't be too horribly offended. Sometimes I forget to check my comments before I make my commentaries, and so I'd let this one go for a while. So, so one of my subscribers asked if he thinks that I, I feel a jumping mechanic, sort of like Halo or Destiny's, would work well, or would, could be integrated effectively into the Gears universe. And I actually don't really enjoy, personally, the jumping mechanics okay, um, but I, I feel like the Gears universe, the evade role is a, is a more of a effective maneuver for the universe, and it feels, it makes the game feel more grounded, oh to where you don't have people jumping in the air that likes like superhero basketball playing super soldiers, but like it, it, it contributes to the weight of the game, which which they have done in so many other ways. Uh, the, the characters feel heavy and grounded, and I, I, like I said, I, I feel like, like the jumping mechanic would actually take away from that if, if they were super, super bouncy. Not a real big deal one way or the other, but, and I also think that I would like to keep my evade role, and so integrating a jumping mechanic could be sort of clunky. Uh, I don't know what button you'd use for it. I, I, I don't really feel like the jumping would be integrated well. So... There's a random. I mean, sometimes I, I get in these discussions with, with random people, and um, I'm, I was training for a uh, the tough fighter that I did, and I was just one, wondering what sort of impact it would have on you if you could see a picture of what you, you yourself would look like in 15 years. Like, let's say this the whole the thing was set up to where if you don't change your present course and you don't you don't change your behavior in any way, going into the path you're going, you're going to look like this. Would you choose to to see that picture? Of course, it could be always that the classic self-fulfilling prophecy of you see the picture of someone who is toned and fit and just in a great all-around shape, and you think, "Wow, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to look awesome." And as consequently, you get lazy and turn into a fat blob. Or it could be vice versa, where there's the pictures of you as a fat blob, and and so you you just you get in there and you you work out like crazy, and you actually change the future, and then um, you know. There'd always be the horror, the horrible thing, of like look at the picture and it's just basically a little like a dark hole. But when you look at it really well, you see it's little skeletal remains, or maybe a you and an urn <laughs> sitting there, and you're like, oh no! If I continue my present course, I'm gonna be dead in 15 years. Anyway, random question: Would you look at the picture? Would you choose to look at it, and, and so you can have a chance to change your future, w with the risk of accidentally changing that future? Like so, even though you can see what you would look like. You might not look like that because you looked at the picture, or would you just just go ahead and um, go on and live your life the way you're living it and hope that you're making good choices? And perhaps even more importantly, and perhaps even a better question is, would you choose to see a picture of what your significant other is going to look like in 15 years unless it change? And of course, this is one of those things which could just destroy your relationship because if you look at them, you're like, oh no, you're going to be a wrinkly hag in 15 years. And so you're like, oh, you should stop smoking. You should stop doing this. I think you should exercise more. And then like it totally ruins your relationship and they leave you. And then, but somehow, because they get with someone who actually is more positive in their encouragement methods, they turn out looking great in 15 years and you feel sad. Um, who knows? Anything where you can actually see or get a glimpse in the future and it's sort of... Either, if it's set, or if it's not set, either way, it, it, it's always uh, has a sort of time-bending um, causality circles where um, you could possibly wind up doing more damage from knowing the future than you would have if you just didn't know it at all. So that's, that's always one of those random topics, which is interesting to discuss and contemplate, but um, not really that profitable, and since we have no real means of telling the future or looking at the future anyway, yeah, mostly just pure conjecture. So, um, I did go on a fishing skip, uh, uh, shit, uh, I did, went, went on a fishing trip, on a ship, on a boat, actually, uh, in the ocean. And so whenever I go, ever go on a fishing trip in the ocean, I have a sort of unusual or non-traditional method of, of measuring my, my fishing tip's success, whether or not I felt like I did okay on this fishing trip or not, or whether it was worth taking. And that metric is, Man, is I take the number of times, a number of fish that I caught, and then I divide it by the number of times I vomited to catch those fish, 
and then you have a number, which is your fishing chip, fishing trip met metric of success. And for me, uh, fishing, my last fishing trip I went on was a solid two. I managed to catch two fish, only vomit over the side once. Although if you, if, if it really depends on how you count the vomiting. If it's one segment, it's once. If it's several, oh, yeah. if it's um, times per, you know, if you well, count each bend over and wretch as a vomit, then I probably went like 0.5. So, and any time that you do a fishing trip and you don't vomit at all, then you had a good fishing trip. I don't care if you caught anything. I don't, caught anything. You got to float on the ocean in a boat and you didn't barf. That's a win. Let's see where am I in this commentary? I have time, I think, to discuss some unusual news stories. So let's set the stage here. It's always important to get a full grasp of all the parties and how they relate to each other. So we have this one lady who is living at the residence of a sister and a brother. She has been recently dating the brother, and the sister and brother also have several dogs. This lady begins to have an affair with the dogs, and yes, that is exactly how it sounds. She's having relationships with the dogs, and then the sister and brother discover this relationship with these dogs. And as any reasonable and logical person would do, in order to preserve her relationship with these dogs, and possibly not to go, not to, go to prison for bestiality, I'm not sure that even crossed her mind. She probably just uh, was seeing the, her wonderful um, bonding with the Fidos come and go to close, and so she decided to poison the two brother and sister owners. And I'm not sure why at this point they were even eating food or anything having anything to do with her, but the day following the discovery, she apparently made them dinner and tried to put toilet bowl cleaner and rubbing alcohol in their food and water to poison them. They noticed the water, the food tasting odd, and eventually wound up getting seeking medical treatment. Both of them survived because, honestly, toilet bowl cleaner and is going to make your food taste so terrible, no one will eat enough of it to die. And, of course, we've already established that this picker person probably was not a champions of logic or uh, critical thinking. Uh, 53 yeah. years old, maybe 15 years in the past, if she had looked at a picture of her mugshot, she would have changed her life and done something differently. So, I'm not sure if you guys read about this, but in, earlier in the month, yeah. Facebook was, oh, gasp and whore, disaster of the century, down for, for a few hours. And this prompted panicked users in California to call 911 complaining about it. And, pr and asking them to do something. Oh, oh the humanity. Right it's the same kind of reaction you, ex you expect that, you know, the house is burning down, you must do something. There's a flood raging through the streets and children drowning everywhere, you must do something. The, sc the school, school is being bombed, do something. My selfie is not being liked, you must do something. It seems like as te social technology has Literally. become more and more prevalent, Honestly. that people have got a disconnect between what's actually important in life. When I was a child, I was really grilled by my parents to never call 911 under any circumstance unless it was the most dire of emergencies. And if I called it and, an, and it wasn't a dire emergency, then I would have a dire emergency of my own, particularly in my backside. But, um, and so I remember uh, when I rolled my car, my re only really bad car wreck I'd been in, uh, came around the corner too fast, flipped over, slid along the top, 40 feet through a ditch, crawled out the window and I was sitting there on top of the, the wreck of my car thinking wow I'm wondering if this is really serious enough to call 911 about and of course it turns out it wasn't because I wasn't light wasn't in serious danger and the car was just gonna sit there until a tow truck got there anyway and it was not obstructing traffic ah people sometimes uh, you know I, I, I watch Futurama and yeah. one quote which is really good is but <laughs> <laughs> the professor from um, Farnsworth and saying, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. And it seems like the way, with the way people's general intelligence and, and social yeah. awareness and selfish that idiocy is going, Whatever. that that's probably a pretty darn decent thing to say. And of course, thank you to Angry Beaver. Uh, great oh, game. And be sure to check out his channel if you enjoy watching uh, gameplays. Yeah. And I will see you all later. Yeah. And be sure to tune in next time for more fascinating topics and interesting discussions over mediocre gameplays. Talk to you later, guys.